champion in the white shorts. Catus, the British champion, having his first fight ever abroad since turning professional in 1975. Chippy Lisko, of course, the man who took the title of Charlie Nash of Ireland in Dublin last summer, with some very hard punching. Oh, that's a useful little left hook dug down to the body of Catus, and the British champion felt that. The legs almost went, and he has, in fact, gone over in the first 30 seconds of this European title win. Ray Cullen takes the compulsory eight count. Well, what a terrible start for Catus. Comes all this way to Campo Basso, about 150 miles south of Rome, and finds himself on the deck within half a minute or so of the first bell. So Gibby Lisco, this man born in Italy, in Sicily as a matter of fact, who emigrated to Australia and is now back in his homeland of Italy. Gibby Lisco, hard puncher, has made the British champion feel the weight of his punch at the start of this European Championship. Louis Michel, French referee. And a Dutch and a Spanish judge. the British corner down there, Frank Black and Terry Lawless watching their man with some anxiety, no wonder. And Catus, this 29-year-old British champion, fighting back in this first round, having had that shocking start. And seems to have recovered pretty well. This stocky Italian, Jubilisco, strong, punching hard, even so being forced back by Catus. And this Italian crowd now, very much hoping for a quick win for their man. did look like it at one time but Catus has made uh, sufficient a recovery here to give the British camp a bit of hope Jimenez is still pumping away with both hands It's obviously a very good opening round for the holder of the title. Joey Jubilisco, 27 years old, born in Sicily. He had all his early boxing in Australia. There's that left hook went into the ribs. You can see how the effect uh, catches up there with Catus. And although he stays on his feet for a few more seconds, I think he decided under this uh, non-stop bombardment that he better have a rest. And he took eight seconds. But he seems all right now. Well, now we're in the fourth round. And in fact, the second and third have gone through without further problems for Ray Catus of Ballam, the British champion. And he's made a pretty good recovery. And he's beginning to take the initiative against the white-shorted Jubilisco, pushing the champion back around the ring. Although Jubilisco is taking a lot of these punches of Catus's on his gloves and arms, and is always countering. This is Catus's first attempt at the European Championship. Considering Catus has been a pro for six and a half years, he's had very few fights, only 27. But he's only ever lost one fight, and amazingly enough, that was the first pro fight he ever had back in 75. And Catus now making a big effort in this fourth round to get back into this. Slamming away with two hands, drops one low, gets the caution for it, right hand. He's had one warning about that earlier.
and in fourth. Lisco might be a bit disappointed, having had the man on the deck early on. Couldn't keep him there. And Katus is still looking very strong. On five. This European champion in the white shorts, Joey Jubilisco. Broad-shouldered, stocky, strong, good hitter. And good at covering up. He takes a lot of punches on his arms and gloves. And although Katus is forcing the pace here, you can see how many of the British champion's punches are slipping around the back of the champion's neck or hitting him on the arms. And all the time, Jubiloso is coming in with some quite good counter punches. something tell against this man punches aren't really landing anywhere it's doing much good fifth round scheduled for 12 in the palazzo della sport in campo basso in southern italy Jubilisco's going back, he's scoring. And this fifth round is certainly the best one that the European champion has had since the first, when he put Patus on the floor. So after five rounds, it's clear that Katus, who looks a little unsteady as he goes back to the corner, has got a lot to do here in Italy if he's going to win this fight. The ice pack on the face of Gibilisco. Now they come out for the seventh. And Katus must know that he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to take this title out of Italy and back to Britain. And although Katus is trying to set the pace and take the fight to Gibilisco, he's getting just as good back as he's giving. So it's a hard, hard fight indeed for the British champion. First fight he's ever had abroad as a pro. He's done most of his fighting in London. The furthest he's travelled for a fight before this was to Glasgow, which is where he won the uh, vacant British title. He won it against Dave McCabe, the Scot, and defended it against the same man in Glasgow. And made that defence last March, and has had only one fight since. Patus has had some back and shoulder troubles in the summer, and he's a bit short of competition over the last year. This is Jibilisco's second defense of this title. After winning it from Charlie Nash, he defended it against Heredia of Spain and had him down six times. Well, he's got another caution. Katus for hitting low. That's the third time he's been told about that. He's so anxious to get to Jibilisco's body that he's dropping one or two of them low. But he doesn't seem to be doing any great harm with them. And that's the end of the seventh round. Hard, hard fight. 
Jubilisko still suffering from a swelling around the right eye. Paolo Rossi, the Italian commentator there, old friend of ours. Now they come out for the ninth. And this Italian crowd sensing an Italian victory here. But Catus is still there and still forcing the pace. And he still looks quite strong. And he's never been in any real trouble since that opening 30 seconds. Since Gibellisco returned from Australia to his homeland of Italy in 1978, he's never lost a fight. He hasn't lost a fight in Europe, Gibellisco. He's never been stopped in his entire professional career. So the form is useful. Known in, in Australia as Jolting Joey, and here he's doing his best to jolt the British champion a bit more. Catus fights, it always seems as though Gibellisco is strong enough to come back at him with something. And as the bell ends the ninth, so Gibellisco looks even more puffy on the right-hand side of his face. Catus, virtually unmarked. And Terry Lawless now urging him to come out for these last few rounds here and really go at his band. The tenth. And Catus, really, on all the evidence so far, must have something to do if he wants to take this title. He's really got to go at it hard in these closing rounds. And that is what he's trying to do now. Still coming forward. who for so long in the Terry Lawless camp had to live in the shadow of Jim Watt, the former British lightweight and world lightweight champion, but now trying to come into his own and win this European title, which his stablemate Jim Watt used to hold. Catus's wife just given birth to a son, so if he could get this title, what a double celebration that would be. Round 10, two more after this. And beginning to push Jibalisco back and back and back around this ring. And Katus now looks far the stronger of the two and he's beginning to punish the defending champion. Now then, can Katus pull this round having been on the floor in the opening 30 seconds? Oh, and over goes Jibalisco over the ropes and pushed out of the ring and doesn't quite know where he is. The referee says to Katus, you pushed him, which he certainly did. And Jibalisco, looking tired, He's had quite a problem there to disentangle himself from the ropes and get himself back on his feet. The 10th. And Catus is coming very, very strongly now. And for the first time in this fight, Jubilisco looks very unhappy. Bell to end the tenth. Well, this is how Jubilesco got pushed over the centre rope, and over he went, feet in the air, and for a few seconds he really didn't know where he was at all. Well, now they're coming together in the centre of the ring, touch of gloves, this is the twelfth and final round. Now then, can Catus mount a really big attack in this last round to try to take this title away from the man who went out in front early on and Catus has been trying to get back on terms ever since and certainly in these last three rounds Catus has looked much the stronger man and Jibalisco begins to look like someone who might have trouble surviving the course Uh, 
it's a slip oh, and over they both go now and this is a sign of tiredness in both men the legs are weak they've had a hard fight it's been a grueling fight all the way but there's no no question now in the final round who's the stronger and it's the British champion Katus And he's almost out of the ring again, Jim Alisco, like he was in the 10th. Katus bleeding quite heavily from the mouth. Jim Alisco doing too much holding. There's been caution for it. He's holding now because he's desperately tired and he's going to have a job to stay to the last bell. is going to be touch and go in this fight. The referee and two judges will score it if he gets to the bell and he's almost gone out over the centre rope again. And it's certainly been all Katus over the final three rounds. No doubt about that. And Katus feels that he's done enough to win but it will have to go to the judges. And Jim Alisco was in all sorts of trouble in this 12th round. That was the stumble and the slip where they both went over. And now the decision. And in fact, it's a draw. One judge for Katus, one for Jim Alisco. The other one makes it a draw. And so Katus hasn't made it. But my word, he came desperately close to doing it. And there'll be disappointment in that Terry Lawless count.